Would you please pray with me? O oh God, you have brought us again to this glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dead.
My wife told me to stand up. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. I'm still pretty short. So, um, But I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you all so much for coming. And uh, <coughs> just to give a few introductions to some folks, um, m most of you are here uh, on Sunday mornings, but I, I don't ever get to really uh, say how grateful I am to, to the folks who, who are up here each and every single week. Uh, and so I, I just wanted to at least thank um, our regulars, um, Perry Israel, Paul Edmondson, and Eric Nolan, who are up here uh, helping out and, and just here every single week, uh, and, and they're here again tonight. Uh, joining them also is Brian Cato, who's, who's a member and, and just been such a joy to get to know this year. And, uh, and then also uh, a, a, a new, folk, new, new guy joining us just this week, in fact, uh, and we're, we're so grateful to have him tonight, uh, Jason Choate, uh, playing fiddle. Um, it, it, just give them a warm welcome, a round of applause. Um, It, it's just been so great to be here this year. Um, we, we didn't know, my, my wife and I, we didn't know what to expect coming back to the United States after living abroad for a couple of years. Um, you know, cu coming back home, coming back to the South. Um, we, we were nervous because uh, we had been changed. Um, our, our life in living in Scotland and in the UK, um, it, it definitely brought change into our lives and we're so grateful for that time. And, and the deep, deep friendships that we still have there. Um, and we were nervous to come here. Uh, and so I just want to say thank you all so much for making us feel so welcome and at home here in Little Rock. It really has been a pleasure to be here, and we look forward to many, many years to come. Um, also, just to say thank you to everyone who's involved tonight. We've got a, a, a choir who is, who is getting involved and is going to be starting to sing with us in New Heights on occasion, uh, who I'm going to go on and invite up. Uh, and then just all of our soloists this, season, th th this evening, Lisa Simmons and Susan Dietz, who you just heard, uh, Shane Frazier, Brittany Zielstra, um, my lovely bride, Casey Weatherford, uh, and the two best, of course, of the evening, uh, India Knight and Stella Cochran. And, uh, and so I just I, I thank everyone so much for being involved, and uh, I hope that uh, you find this to be a wonderful worship service, but also an enjoyable evening. So just to get things started, I wanted to share a reading. Some words from, from an author today. Her name is Sally Lloyd-Jones. Um, she's the author of the Jesus Storybook Bible, among many others. Um, and just thought these words were so nice to start our night out. It's Advent. Time for singing and carols. It happened that first Christmas. It set everyone off singing. When the angel told her the impossible, wonderful news that she would give birth to God's baby boy, Mary's response was to sing the Magnificat. When the angels announced the news to the shepherds, they sang it out across the heavens. And when he got wind of it, John the Baptist's dad couldn't help it either. He burst into song. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. From Luke 1, 78 and 79. So tonight, may the wonder of this startling, impossibly wonderful good news break through to each one of us and set us off singing. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, and for to the exiles, until the Son of God A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. shall give you a, and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. This rundown tenement hall is the room of a girl I know, and she hides deep inside all the dead old locks, afraid of the outside world. How should I come to the one I love? I will find a way. Many thieves and collectors have used that door But they only brought her shame So she won't even open it anymore Still I will find a way I could call out her name with love through the walls Condemnation is all she'll hear I could break down the door and take her into my arms She might die from the fear So how should I come to the one I love? I will find a way, I will find a way How should I come to the one I love? I will find a way No hiding place ever kept her safe So she hides inside herself 
Now to reach your heart, the only way is to hide in there as well. I will hide in there as well. She gave up on love waiting for a change But a change is coming soon Cause how could she not love the helpless babe Who is waking in her womb I found a way I found a way She'll know I am coming before I am here When she hangs her head, she'll see me there And then when I come, she won't run away All the beauty and joy will return to her face And the heart of the loneliness, now it is gone Lost in the bond of a mother and son Every sin that she suffered at the hands of men Every single disgrace will be washed clean again I will love her completely And when I am gone I will carry her out of that tenement room I'm doing a new thing And soon you will see I'm coming among you And my name shall be Emmanuel. Emmanuel, I have come to take you home. In this Advent season, come, Lord Jesus. In every season, every hour, come, Lord Jesus. In times of harvest, come, Lord Jesus. When our fields are fallow, come, Lord Jesus. When we are hungry, come, Lord Jesus. When we are fed, come, Lord Jesus. When we are healthy, come, Lord Jesus. When we are sick, come, Lord Jesus. When we are generous, come, Lord Jesus. When we are greedy, come, Lord Jesus. When our prayers falter, our faith weakens, our light grows dim, come, Lord Jesus. When we are poor in spirit, come, Lord Jesus. When we are rich in joy, come, Lord Jesus. When we are torn by the thorns of accusation, ravaged by the cancer of sin, crushed under the weight of sorrow, pierced by the spear of rejection, come, Lord Jesus. When we are made new by grace, come, Lord Jesus, to those who mourn, come, Lord Jesus, to those who comfort, come, Lord Jesus, to those who are persecuted, come, Lord Jesus, to those who are free from persecution, come, Lord Jesus, to the peacemakers, come, Lord Jesus, to the wagers of war, Come, Lord Jesus. To the victims of war, to the widowed and the orphaned, to the abandoned and the homeless, to the bleeding and the dying, to the weary and the desperate, to the maimed and the crippled, to the imprisoned and the tortured, to the lost and the forsaken. Come, Lord Jesus. 
when powers and principalities oppress, when governments kill, when riches are hoarded, when innocents are slaughtered, when community is destroyed. Come, Lord Jesus, for the peace that passes all understanding, for the gospel of enemy love, for the kingdom of the poor and broken. Come, Lord Jesus, open our eyes to need, ready our hands to serve, transform our hearts to love. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And this is the sixth month, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. 
God was coming to help his people just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down. Seas would have roared. Trees would have clapped their hands. But the earth held its breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in. And when no one was looking in the darkness, he came.
Methodist Church opened the Arkansas Methodist Orphanage, which later became known as the Methodist Children's Home. We are now called Methodist Family Health, which is a nonprofit organization that offers psychiatric and behavioral health care to children and families in Arkansas. Through our specialized continuum of care, we are able to offer help and assistance at every level. Methodist Family Health's mission is to give the best possible care to those who may need our help. We have programs and services in 22 cities across the state. We care for more than 1,400 children and their families every day. Methodist Family Health offers hope and healing through our behavioral hospital, counseling clinics, and school-based counseling services. The historic Methodist Children's Home program continues in the form of therapeutic group homes, residential treatment centers, and in an emergency shelter. We have therapeutic foster care, day treatment programs, and the specialized services of Kaleidoscope Grief Center and Arkansas Cares. Many who seek our help have experienced abandonment, neglect and abuse, and they have been dealing with difficult emotional and behavioral issues. No child is ever turned away at Methodist Family Health. We carry out our mission by treating the whole person behaviorally, emotionally, and spiritually. Please join Methodist Family Health in giving a gift of hope to an Arkansas family. Listen to your heart and help us care for the children and families who need your love and support. So I'm guessing that you saw some familiar faces in the video. Methodist Family Health has been around for 115 years now, caring for kids and families, and I've been working with them for the past nine years, and I've seen us grow from caring for 200 kids a day in the state of Arkansas to over 1,400, and we're still continuing to grow. In your chairs today was a special offering brochure for Methodist Family Health. We are not apportioned by the Methodist Church. We rely heavily on gifts from churches, United Methodist Women's Groups, groups, everybody that can help support Methodist Family Health. And I hope that you'll see today, and that video will move you to make a gift today. Um, every gift that will be placed in the offering basket will go directly towards Methodist Family Health. And you can also take this home with you, pray about it, think about it, and think about ways to get involved with Methodist Family Health. It's really, really neat because it's a very busy season, and Scott can tell you when we're shopping for 300, 400 kids that call Methodist Family Health, that are, call us their home every night. And so I've had the joy and pleasure of doing some Christmas shopping, going to Toys R Us a few days ago, pretty crazy in there, um, shopping for some of our kids. And personally, I don't have kids myself, so I was constantly looking for a salesperson going, now what is this? Um, but it's really, really neat. So I hope that you'll consider doing something for Methodist Family Health this season. There's so many opportunities to get involved. The church that I spoke at this morning, I told them, what about even just used books or gently used coats? Anything. Methodist Family Health can use anything because a lot of these kids come to us sometimes at 2 in the afternoon or 2 in the morning. And we're constantly trying to meet the needs so that they all have clothes to go to school the next day. It was really cute. The other day I was giving a tour to a group of seven or eight ladies, and they constantly were asking the girls at the children's home, what is something that we can do for you? What is something that we can give you? And two girls, not even in the same room, said, we just want some Kool-Aid jammers. And all it is is a pouch of sugar water, right? I mean, that's how simple the needs are. And so I went to Kroger, found the Kool-Aid jammers, took them over there, and you would have thought that I gave them a million dollars. It just totally made their day. So that's how much of an impact a small gift today can make. Um, you know, items, financial support, prayers, 
come out and see these kids at the children's home. We just desperately need your support, and we appreciate this church because it has been so giving through Vacation Bible School, Get Up and Give, um, and letting us come and share about Methodist Family Health. And the last thing that I will say is that if you know of anybody that needs mental health services within your church, within your places of work or business, please turn to Methodist Family Health. We'll be happy to help you and your families. Thank you. At this time, with those who are receiving our offering, come forth. On your face that you need to know. Give me your heart, I will hold it. I'll give you mine as a token of love. Oh, my love, give, give it away. Give it Give it away, give it away. It's okay to clap. Clapping's a good thing, especially after you experience a beautiful song. It's such a great pleasure to be with you. I have the pleasure of sharing in Holy Communion with you all. A couple things I want you to know. One is that it doesn't really matter if you're a member of this congregation or even if you are a United Methodist. If you wish to encounter the Messiah at his table, you are invited. This is open to you. We'll be sharing communion through intinction. That means one person will tear off a portion of bread and give it to you. And then there will be a cup that you're invited to dip your bread in, receiving the bread and the juice simultaneously. For any of you who may need the gluten-free option, that will be here in the center, and then the bread and the juice will be on either side. Now the housekeeping is out of the, order, out of the way. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angel sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, as Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected as in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, the bread of life, on that night so long ago, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Those assisting in the service would please come forward. The, the ushers will, will guide you on when to come up. The gluten-free option will be here. And the bread and juice will be on either side.
Christmas bells are ring them loud for all to hear. Hope of all hopes, dream of our dreams, a child is born, sweet breath, a son is given to us, a living gift, and even now with tiny features and dewy hair, he is great. The power of leadership and the weight of authority will rest on his shoulders. His name, his name will know in many ways. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Dear Father Everlasting, Ever Present, Never Failing, Master of Wholeness, Prince of Peace. His leadership will bring such prosperity as you've never seen before, sustainable peace for all time. This child, God's promise to David, a throne forever among us, to restore sound leadership that cannot be perverted or shaken. He will ensure justice without fail and absolute equity, always. The intense passion of the eternal commander of heavenly armies will carry this to completion. Oh, ring those Christmas bells, a ring them loud for all to hear. Oh, ring those Christmas bells, a ring them loud for all to hear. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For every you to stand with us singing in this great old hymn oh come all ye faithful oh come all ye faithful joyful and triumphant oh come ye oh come ye to
May you be so filled with peace, love, joy, and hope through the Holy Spirit that it spills out from you when you leave this place. Share the love of Christ with the world. Amen. Amen. Give it up for the choir one more time. That the Lord will see me through I pray on Christmas He'll show me what to do